The Nano Plus has an extraordinary video quality and, as many as you know, it is a favorite of mine for footage. The photography side has improved a lot after two firmware updates. So, in this video I will do an in-depth analysis of the Nano Plus for photographers, including the famous 50 megapixel photo mode. I will show still images taken in all kinds of light conditions, including some astonishing night pictures. So, fasten your seatbelts. The good people of Hotel had finally woken up and realized that the histogram was incredibly missing in the first release of this model. They decided to add one, and now we can finally expose properly. After a firmware update, the famous 50 megapixel photo mode is finally available. We can now take full advantage of the ability of the quad Bayer sensor to split each pixel into four smaller ones, thus achieving a sort of 50 megapixel instead of the real 12.6. Both on one photo row and capture one recognize the image as 8192 by 6144 pixels. The sensor of the Mavic Air 2 offered the same capability, but I was not particularly impressed by the result. Let's see how the high resolution mode is implemented in the Nano Plus. In all my previous reviews of photography, I never taken into account JPEG files, and I focus on RAW only, as the difference in the final result is generally huge. But the Nano Plus is a different beast. Let's see why. In the software packages I use at the moment, there is not a specific profile for this drone. I believe the same is true for Lightroom, please correct me if I'm wrong. In the first firmware of the Nano Plus, there were plenty of issues with the RAW files. After a couple of updates, things have improved a lot, but the RAW files are still a bit quirky to work with. First of all, the images have a strong dark vignette, with an unusual shape. It is obviously possible to get rid of it and create a preset with Lightroom or other software, but the shape and the strength of the vignette are not consistent in all images, so some extra manual tweaking is needed. There is also still at times a bit of green cast in some images, although much improved compared to the first release. So it is quite complex to post-process raw files and the results are a bit inconsistent. In some scenes, I get astonishing quality, top of the class for drone photography. I will certainly compare the still images of the Nano Plus with the one of the Mavic 3, and in my opinion, we are in the same territory. But other times there are issues. In this case, some darker areas remain on the bottom left and bottom right of the image. There is also an area in the upper center with slightly higher luminosity and a touch of a magenta cast compared to the rest of the image. A bit similar to the magenta cast that the Mavic 3 had at the beginning, but was quickly fixed by a firmware update. You can also notice that the buildings in the middle of the image tend towards magenta, while the one to the right, under the same light condition, are yellowish. The same image in 50 megapixel JPEG works perfectly well. Some of the issues are probably due to the RYYB color filter, and Otol has still some work to do to supply a color profile. Otherwise, the raw files of the Nano have a gigantic potential. The good news is that the JPEG files are incredibly good, and this is excellent for users who don't rely on computer per processing or need to post the images immediately on social media. There is also the 50 megapixel mode. Let's compare it to the JPEG. In these top-down images, we cannot see a big difference in terms of detail and color rendition. They are both excellent. In a situation of very high dynamic range, the two images are probably the best I've seen in a consumer drone under such conditions. The 
the 50 megapixel one has a bit more detail and color information in the shadows. But the big strength of the 50 megapixel file is that they respond extremely well to post processing, just as well as a raw file, which is very surprising. There is plenty of flexibility when working with colors, and I very easily find the results I'm after. Let's see now some images under different conditions, taken either in RAW or in 50 megapixel JPEG. Let me know in the comment below your opinion about the quality of these photos, and give a big thumb up if you find the video interesting. In these top-down images, I find that the 50 megapixel images are excellent. And up the edges over the raw files, both in detail and in color renditions, especially in the vegetation. In scene containing the sky, it is possible to use the defog option to get a better structure of the sky. It comes with three strength levels, and I find that low and medium often give excellent results. The trade-off is that sometimes the element in the ground might lose detail and get a bit muddy, as it is the case here. In general, I avoid the strong level, as it is just too much. True high dynamic range is an area where peaks taken with the Nano Plus really shine. Until a year ago, we could not even dream of getting such quality in this kind of situation. Even against the full sun, there is no flare, and we don't notice any loss of detail or saturation. The colors remain very natural, simply astonishing. In our videos I have shown footage taken with the Nano Plus, and the results were simply unbelievable. A lot of users could not believe that they were taken at night. Believe me, it was absolutely pitch dark here, well before sunrise, and as you can see the results are astonishing. Not only better than any prosumer drone, but also better than some full-frame cameras. Due to the f1.9 aperture of the camera and the RYYB filter, the Nano Plus is able to gather a huge amount of light. Actually, I started by taking some night pictures in auto exposure, and they were hugely overexposed, believe it or not. I had to lower the EV value by two stops to get good results. In spite of the issues with the raw files, the Nano Plus is an extraordinary drone for photography. I cannot wait to test it again, the Mavic 3. Very good job, beautiful pictures. Well done. Click on this link to watch my other videos about the Nano Plus, and don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting.